random art tips and rambles with Rafi. Hola, you amazing artist. It's Rafi. And Klee. And today we are going to talk about passive aggressive and condescending comments about your art. Ooh. Yeah. Somebody asked us a few questions, actually two questions that we got. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and read both of them right now. So the first one comes from Michelle Laird and she asked, do you guys have any insults you've been called in a passive aggressive way? I've had people say, oh, you're so crafty. And to me, it sounds condescending about the work I put into paintings and other projects. Yeah. Yeah, we have. We definitely have, Michelle. So we'll get into that after this next question. Our second question comes from Like a Fairy. Could you do a video on how to handle condescending people who, for example, ask questions like, yeah, but do you sell anything? How many paintings have you sold? Yeah. So blatantly condescending and passive aggressively condescending exactly which in my book they're all condescending which are coming from one of two places insecurity or just lack of understanding how to communicate yeah exactly some people say condescending i mean when it comes down to it like my parents uh people that love me will say condescending comments because they just don't know and then you have people that say condescending comments about what i'm doing or my artwork because either a they're trying to be funny or b um they're just condescending you know they're being condescending towards the fact that i'm an artist so i actually like when people ask these types of questions rather than just think them in their heads because it gives me a chance to answer them yeah yeah and i usually just answer them with blatant honesty so for example the question oh this is so good are you doing pretty good are you selling any jewelry i like to say oh yeah this keeps me extremely busy (laughs) (laughs) this is my full-time job and i'm i'm pretty i'm pretty busy yeah yeah i mean and that's the thing like it all depends on where you're at so so if you're already selling like a bunch of art or you're selling a bunch of jewelry um somebody who asks you a stupid question like that like oh that's that's really because they're looking at you like oh that's really nice let me pat you on the head i like your little macaroni collages do you actually like make any money from that and you're like yeah i do uh Next question. Yeah, and a lot of times they're probably asking you because they don't think they can do it. Yeah, exactly. Or they don't know anyone who's doing it. And if you're just starting out and you haven't sold any work, you could answer them honestly and say, well, I'm kind of in the building process of this business. Yeah. I mean, and the thing is that it all comes down to what your reaction is. People are going to say all kinds of things, and really it comes down to your reaction. I could give you the perfect example. When I very, very first showed my art the first time that I ever showed my art where I did the Museum of Contemporary Art thing in Chicago and it was this huge event and there were all these like who's who's from the art world in the River North uh, Art Gallery District and all these people and my my ex-wife my wife at the time her friends came over and these were very very wealthy affluent people and uh, the husband came up and looked at my artwork and said oh So did you have your kids help you with this? Oh, man. And, you know, at the time, I was so insecure. I mean, some if somebody asks me that now, it's pretty easy. My question, my my answer to that is like, oh, yeah, yeah, my kids are artistic geniuses as well. You know, so like it's not it it's not going to bother me. I'm like, it doesn't matter. I'm very confident in my art and who I am and what I do. And I and I understand some people just don't get it. But back then, when that comment came um, I did not handle it well. I actually physically shut down the moment that he said that and I had no comeback for him because I was extremely insecure and then I found myself getting angry about it and then months later I was still thinking about it um, because I just didn't know any better. I I thought that other people's comments about my art were way more important than how I felt about my art because a lot of my life was guided by what other people told me was good or bad or what other people told me that I was versus my life now, which is I'm the one that's in control. I get to decide how I'm going to feel every single moment. And when somebody says something condescending or mean to me, um, I'm going to respond and be a smart ass because that's just who I am. Yeah, you basically just give them a response that's genuine to you. If you're caught off guard and you don't know what to say, I would just take a pause and say, 
I'm sorry. I was just totally thrown off by your question. Yeah. Let me just take a moment so I can answer you. And it does. It takes it takes practice. I would say that one of the coolest things that you could do is kind of practice that on your own. Like think of the worst condescending comments that somebody could tell you about your art and then kind of practice a response in your imagination. And that way you've got you've got it loaded like you're waiting. It, it's almost it almost makes it exciting. Like, oh, I can't wait till somebody says this to me so I can <laughs> yeah. respond and this way your mindset is everything when you are pursuing an art career like the way that you feel about yourself and your art is the most important thing when you're pursuing an art career because you are going to run into a lot of rejection you are going to run into a lot of condescending comments I mean, and no matter how long you've been doing it, I've been doing this for a long time. I've sold a lot of artwork and yet I could still have an event where I go and I have artwork up and somebody walks in. It's like, oh. there's all kinds of comments that people make. Sometimes they're just trying to be funny in front of their friends. And I always, I actually look forward to that. I love that because I'll walk up to him. I'm like, really? So that's what you see when you look at that piece? Yeah. I mean, people have all kinds of motivations, whether it's high school mindset, dad jokes, yeah, or they're trying to be condescending, or they just seriously don't know. Do you remember when we were doing a show and the guy came in and he was looking at your paintings and my jewelry, and I think they bought something, and he said, so he makes the art and you collect the money, huh? Oh, yeah, yeah. And I came back with, no, sir, I wield the power tools. <laughs> <laughs> the fact of the matter is, that's his reality that he's totally projecting into a scenario. So I made it into a joke. And I also have had people say, this is really pretty jewelry. Do you make any of it? Yeah. And then I get to say, yes, indeed, I make 100% of it. And that's them not knowing. Yeah. And then I get to tell them. Yeah. And you get you also get people that walk in. And it's like, oh, well, my niece makes jewelry just like this. And a lot of times I'm like, oh, you know, that's good. Especially if they're like talking about their daughter making art. And yeah. I'm like, yo, that's awesome. Your daughter's an artist, you know, and I'll engage in a conversation with them. I don't generally take it personally because I know that a lot of people, that's how they're expressing that they like something. Mm -hmm. They're just trying to make a connection and relate. Yeah, they're making a connection and relating. So I think there's an art form to listening to commentary and being able to understand where the commentary is coming from and being able to respond appropriately for you so that you walk away feeling good. And you get better at that with time, for sure. Yeah, you get better with time and with practice. Just uh, get, you know, get ready for it. Understand that there's people out there that are going to have a different perspective uh, there are people out there that may make a condescending comment and not even realize that they're being condescending. Uh, there are people out there that will make a condescending comment and they are totally being condescending. You tend to react to each one appropriately when you're ready for them. Yeah, you take it on a case-by-case -case basis. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I, I am pretty used to condescending comments when it comes to my art because of growing up with my dad. My dad always likes to make a joke about something. Oh, yeah, he sure especially does. Especially when it comes to the art. Uh, and so like he makes a joke and back when I was really insecure about it, I would take every single one of those comments so personally, you know, in fact, for a long time, I blamed him for not creating art until I became more confident in my art. And I realized that a lot of times he's not even looking at the, he's just making something like when I created that, uh, Eagle piece, the very first Eagle piece that I created for the wildlife sanctuary. And he said that it looked like a retarded parrot. Yeah, I remember that. You know, and it was funny because that would have destroyed me, but it was the first time that I really got to analyze what was actually going on and realize that my dad is just my dad. You mm -hmm. know, that's that's who he is. He does that to everybody. He does that to himself. Um, so like, there's no reason to take it personally. I remember when we first started at the flea market and I was like... Uh, you know, showing my artwork for the first time and somebody came by, uh, I think it was a police officer. He had walked by and he was like, so what do you do here? And I was like, well, I'm, I'm the artist. These are my paintings and my wife makes jewelry. And he's like, well, it must be really nice not to have a real job. And I remember looking at him and thinking to myself, like, did you think that was a compliment? You know, cause that did not come out, come across as a compliment. 
But then I had to stop and wonder, like, well, maybe he hates his job. Maybe he thinks that, like, yeah. you know, and that's that's one of the problems. A lot of condescending comments are going to come from people that assume that because you're an artist, you're not really working, which I would like to say that when you are an artist, I I work harder now than I did when I was in corporate. Oh, absolutely. You know, I there are a lot more hours involved. This is a lifestyle. It's not just a job that you go to and then you leave and you're done with it. This is this is all encompassing. And so the idea that this is less work than something else is ridiculous. Now it is less work in the fact that I love what I do. Yeah, it's not soul crushing. Yeah, it's not soul crushing. So I think that that's what a lot of people assume work is supposed to be, that work is supposed to be the soul crushing thing. So they're kind of condescending. And really what's going on there is that uh, they hate their jobs. They hate their jobs and they're like, what do you get? Why do you get to be so lucky and go and paint little pictures and stuff all day? It must be so nice to just make art all day. To that, I would be like, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, pretty much. So I have a number of comments that I get from people that are kind of like repeated comments that I'm just used to now. It's practiced. Yeah. So like one of them is like, oh, this is this would be really cute jewelry for my daughter. To which I reply, your daughter must have good taste. Yep. Or, oh, this is really cute. Are Is any of this real? <laughs> <laughs> to which sometimes I say, well, if you mean does it exist, then yes, it does exist. <laughs> Or sometimes I just like to say, yes, they're real yeah. and they're fabulous. <laughs> or some people at times have been like, wow, your jewelry is kind of expensive. Right. Why is it so expensive? And that was one that I really struggled with. And I came around to, well, my jewelry is not for everyone, but my collectors do love it. I mean, and that's what it comes down to. Like a lot of people, uh, I know that a lot of people struggle with pricing. Yeah. You know, and I think that they struggle with pricing because they're afraid of those comments. You dealt with a lady that was blatant about oh, the yeah. price. Not not even too long ago, right? What what happened there? Um, I have this a couple of them, but what it boiled down to was uh, she looked at the price tag on a necklace and she said, if I'm going to spend that kind of money, then I'm going to go to a big box store so I know what I'm getting. Yeah. And I was taken aback by that comment. And in her case, I actually just nodded my head and said, okay, because she, there was no communication that was going to happen there. I had another lady say uh, that she was a little skittish about buying gold or silver or having work done from somebody out at a farmer's market. Right. And that she, you know, she feels more comfortable going to like... K jewelers or something right. to which I said it was a chance to educate her and say, well, just so you know, I'm using the same gold that K jewelers is using. I'm just not charging as high a markup for it. Right. And I have the same skill set as any of their jewelers. So I'm confident I could give you what you're looking for. But I understand if your comfort zones are where they are. I just wanted to let you know. Right. <laughs> which is funny because that's I mean, that's the thing. I grew up in the jewelry business. I know what the markup is when you go to any of those places. I know exactly what the markup is when you go to places at the mall. A person might take better care of you than a big box store at a shopping mall. Like, I'm going to care about what happens here with your particular commission. And she was actually pretty appreciative. Yeah. Well, I mean, I could also understand being a little bit weary, you know, because yeah. you we're talking about you. You're very, very honest. Yeah, but she doesn't know that, she right? She doesn't know that. And, uh, you know, the 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 caliber of people that go to the Pal Fox market, the vendors there are pretty amazing and mm -hmm. they're 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 a high caliber. Um if she's going to just any market, you can't guarantee that it's gonna be somebody who's being honest about what their what materials their jewelry is being made out of. Right. You have a little more safety net. With a big box store. Yeah, and maybe you do, but you're paying for it. Yeah. You know, you're paying for it. It's one of the one of the things that drives me crazy is like I remember somebody bringing me a white gold uh, wedding ring and asking us if we did the rhodium plating. And I was like, well, why do you need rhodium plating? It's a white gold ring. Why don't you just have it polished? And you don't have to pay $125 to get it rhodium plated every year. You just polish it up. 
And let me guess, some store had been charging her money. Some store had been charging her money to go and get it and telling her that, oh, you're going to need this plated every year because the plating comes off. And Mm -hmm. it's like, no, you don't. It's a white gold ring. It's not going to tarnish. No, you just have it polished. That's all you got (laughs) to do. You run into that kind of issue in big box stores and you run into that issue at, uh, at the market and stuff. And so a lot of a lot of condescending comments like that come from people that just don't know. Yeah. Or have had a negative experience. And so like you have no idea where they're coming from with the comments. So the best thing you could do is not really concern yourself too much with what they're saying to you, understanding that hey, it has everything to do with their perspective, whether or not they're saying something condescending or passive aggressive about my art. It has nothing to do with me or my art. Um, So that means that I get to respond however it is that I want to respond. Yeah, and I think the main trick is to not take it personally. Get used to not taking it personally because you'll be better equipped to respond. Yeah. And remember that these are just humans bumbling their way through life just like everyone else is and – Give them a little bit of leeway and compassion if they say something stupid. Yeah, give them leeway and compassion. Understand that sometimes they they are going to say, hey, people say stupid things all the time and it's okay. And if someone is being a deliberate D-bag, then be prepared for that too. Yep. You know, practice what you might say. Did you just shame me? Yeah. Shaming is so last decade. In my mind, I like getting myself excited for it, you know, like I'll play this game with myself where I'll be like, well, what if somebody uh, looks at this piece and they're like, well, that that's messed up. Uh, do you remember any any of them? Uh, somebody had said, well, that artwork looks pretty dark. I wonder what he's on. Oh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> that's right. And I was like, well, not any drugs because it totally I'm high on life. He just kind of like looked at me, shook his head and then left the booth. And I was like, all right, well. Bye. That's the thing. It's like, think of think of whatever negative comments somebody might say about your artwork or the fact that you're an artist and come up with some really fun responses for them and get yourself so excited about that, that even if somebody asks you, you're like, oh, yeah, great. I get to use this comment, even if somebody says something. Because people are going to say condescending things. People are going to say mean things. People are going to reject you. People are going to say great things. People are going to say nice things. People are going to say all kinds of things. And I think you should look forward to all of it. Mm -hmm. At least get your mindset to a place where you can look forward to all of it. Because if you're getting a reaction... That means that you're doing something with your art. Yeah, absolutely. And if you're practicing these kinds of responses, then you are way ahead of the bell curve and you'll give yourself an advantage because I spent a good several years just being dumbfounded in the face of commentary and it took me a long time to develop uh, comebacks. Yeah, yeah. And then what ends up happening is that like three weeks later, you're still thinking about it. And you're like, oh, I should have said this or mm-hmm. I should have said that. So just practice it ahead of time so that when it does happen. Yeah. yeah. Think of all the things that you're terrified someone might say and then figure out what you'll say. Yeah. Come up with a great uh, hilarious response. Something. It doesn't even have to be funny to anybody else. It's just something funny to you that you're like, <laughs> Yeah. (laughs) And I think that's it. At the end of the day, I would tell anybody that was going through this kind of issue that get yourself excited about any and all comments that you'll get. Because the fact that you're getting comments means that you're putting your work out there, that you're putting yourself out there. And that is awesome in of itself. So if you get a negative comment or a condescending comment from somebody, have fun with it. I totally agree. Yeah. And in closing, I would say humans. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, humans. And hopefully that answered your question, Michelle. And like a fairy, we might end up doing a video at some point where we uh, talk about more examples that we've gone through. Because you asked if we've ever dealt with it. We have dealt with it over and over and over and honestly it's gotten to the point where it's fun it's not about growing a thick skin it's about having fun with it exactly and that's it for the podcast this week uh, for our patreon members we are doing the live stream on wednesday 
at 7 p.m. Central. So all of you Patreon family out there, uh, just giving you a heads up so that you know to be ready for our Patreon live stream. Yeah, the live stream. And thank you so much for listening, you guys. You guys are absolutely amazing. I totally adore you. And if you like this, you could subscribe somewhere on this box. And that's it. Say goodbye, Clay. Good day. Adios. 